Good morning readers, it's Tilly here from Tilly Shelf and you may recognise a special <laughs> guest today which is Ros from Scully Dundling About the Books, otherwise known as my mother. Um, and today um, we're welcome to another Bookish Breakfast mm. and today we are My starting... first ever Bookish Breakfast? Yeah, you, well you were here for Bookish Boxing Day which wasn't yeah, exactly that was breakfast. breakfast. Yeah, that was breakfast, yeah. Today we're starting our Discussing Drama series yeah. where we're going to talk about, aim to talk about one play every month um, for the year of 2020. Yeah. And, and this is the play for January, so yeah, we're a little bit late with the video, but you know, we had to arrange to be in the same yeah. location. And we won't be in the same location for a all of them. Every month. Oh, we've yeah. only I got to see you every month, how lovely <laughs> that would be. Nice. But it's nice to do the first one together. Yeah. 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 Um, and the next one will be on your channel, so we'll kind of do a bit of alternation yeah. of our videos on both yeah. channels sometimes. And, and we'll get that one up very soon. Hopefully, that's the plan. Because we're reading something for, for Black History Month. Yeah, we're reading Nine Night, but now we're talking about the wrong play. Wrong play, wrong play. <laughs> so today we are talking about Agamemnon. By Aeschylus, or Aeschylus, depending on how you like to pronounce it, or... Aeschylus. Aeschylus. It's Greek it's to me. It's, it's ancient Greek, you don't have to worry. <laughs> um, so yeah, so uh, the play of Agam Agam Agamemnon, Agamemnon um, is is based around some of the, the stories from the Trojan War, isn't it? Yes. Um, and I was quite upset because I didn't know the plot of the play um, and this character appeared called Clytemnestra and I was like, I really recognise the name Clytemnestra, I'm just going to quickly Google and find out who, which person she is. And the, the moment I looked up her name, I got you know, the, the whole story of the play in the first sentence. Um, but I think we're going to go ahead, because it is ancient Greek, we're going to yeah. go ahead and tell you the I, plot of the play. I think worrying about spoilers... Is a little bit... When a play late. is yeah. like two and a half thousand years, years old, almost. really, that ship has sailed, yes. as they say. Along so with the other thousand ships that sailed to Troy. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> um, so if you don't want to know what happens in, in this play... Don't watch! You know, don't just watch. don't watch! <laughs> um, so the, oh, well, and, and, yeah. and the point is... Mm. that the people watching the play when it was originally performed would, would have, known. have known the plot. Yeah. You, weren't, you, you weren't supposed to not know what was going to happen. You were yeah. supposed to be impressed by what the playwright did with, with it. And actually going back and we've, we've both started reading it a second time just yeah. to remind ourselves and refresh. Um, and for me now knowing the, the plot of the play, the kind of like the the use of foreshadowing and the use of ideas yeah. of kind of fate is really impressive. Actually. Yes. It's one of the highlights of the play. Yes, yes, you really notice you're you're really noticing yeah. that now, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I've I've got I've got a, a thing right up here, um a favourite a favourite oh, how did I lose that? Okay. Yeah, where Ag Agamemnon's arrived back from Troy mm -hmm. and uh Platonetra's Clytemnestra's put on this, putting on this big welcome, like, woohoo, it's really pleased to see you. <laughs> oh, I love you so dearly. <laughs> <laughs> when she doesn't mean a word of it. And, uh, but he says, um, call no man blessed until he ends his life in peace. And um, that isn't what happened. And all the audience will be thinking, oh, he's not blessed. He's not blessed. He's You're not so blessed. right, Agamemnon. Little do you know what's <laughs> about to happen to you. Yeah. So shall we briefly just, just, just say what the plot of the play is? So, yeah. um, Go for uh, it. It's, it opens with this character, the Watchman, who I particularly like, um, yes. talking, like setting the scene. Um, in that he he basically says, "I'm here waiting for the the battle, the war at Troy to end." Yeah. Um, and I will find out by a, a set of signal fires. Which yeah, beacons, signal? beacons. Beacons. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, by a set of beacons, we'll be told that the the Greeks the, have won. The Greeks have won. Um, and you know, I'm in this place and Agamemnon's been gone and it's not as good without Ag Agamemnon, Agamemnon, but Clytemnestra's in charge. Yes. Um, it then, the chorus then takes over and we get to see the story of them, they do more scene setting. Yeah. Clytemnestra does all of this religious stuff, Agamemnon gets home. Um, the Herald comes first, but yeah. yeah anyway. Yeah. Um, he, he arrives. I'm trying to summarise. You're summarising, you're doing well. We can keep it short. He arrives. Yeah. Clytemnestra's like, oh, it's so lovely to see you. Oh, and then oh. they go off stage and everyone Let me welcome meets, you in. Everyone yeah. meets a bloody end. Bloody really. end. Um, and, and, and the other key... The character key is... Key female character is Cassandra, um, who is obviously... A the, Trojan woman. The Trojan woman and also the prophetess. Of... Prophetess? of yes. Yeah. Of um, and so she knows what's going to happen yeah and that's a, also a lot of the um uh, drama and attention comes from her knowing and and just being really defeated almost yeah. and a bit pessimistic yeah, and yeah, knowing yeah. that she can't change things can't change things she's and kind of you feel like she's given she's up a, she and and she and she's just a very tragic character always yes because she her awful fate 
her punishment for rejecting the sexual advances of, of Apollo was was to have the gift of prophecy, but to never be believed. And yet, it's just like to it, yeah. spend your whole life. I mean, how no. it would just send you insane, wouldn't it? Like, and yeah. I mean, at the end of this, there are people saying, "Oh no, we'll listen to you. We'll listen to you." And she kind of is just like, "I don't care if you listen because I know it's going to happen. It, yeah. it's, you know, it it doesn't matter to me anymore if somebody yeah. does listen because now I know I'm going to die. I'm almost yeah. She's glad almost that the prophecies about me this time. Yes, almost yeah. relieved that that things are ending. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. she's so controlled by by fate. The thing that I forgot to say about the plot was yeah. um, why Clytemnestra decides to kill Agamemnon. Which is key. Um, which is quite an important plot point. Um, which, if you're familiar with the Trojan, um, the, the, the story of, of, of Troy, um, is that Agamemnon um, sacrificed, chose to sacrifice their daughter, his daughter with Clytemnestra. Iphigenia. Yeah, Iphigenia. Iphigenia. It doesn't um, <laughs> Yeah in order to get the wind to sail to Troy. So yeah. I, basically the story is that Clytemnestra has been saving up all of this maternal anguish for, for all ten of the time. Years, ten, ten years. Ten years of, of, of torment. Grief and wish for revenge. Yeah, and there is, there is a bit in the chorus actually where it yeah. talks about, um, quite near the beginning, where it yeah. talks about how that, like day by day, the, the pain never goes away. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I couldn't possibly yeah. find it in time. Yeah. The yeah. problem with Kindles um, is you can't just quickly click, click. click through them to find oh, your that's quote. True. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there is an incredibly moving scene, mm. um, speech, kind of, yeah. from the chorus <laughs> about when Agamemnon sacrifices. Yeah, about the um, Agamemnon's choice, as it, as it Yeah, says. yes, yes, like his dilemma. Of, yeah. of 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 do I kill my daughter who he supposedly did love he did mm -hmm. yeah he did who was yeah. beautiful and lovely and he's, he's the princess as it were of, of his town yeah and um and versus but if I don't I'm letting down this whole army of of, of people yeah. people that I've gathered this, I've got a whole yeah fleet. this huge alliance yeah but it, it does put it quite beautifully succinctly yeah. when it says you know a, a daughter sacrifice a daughter to support a war to avenge the loss of a woman it's like yeah. when you put it like that he's putting his daughter against Helen of Troy yeah. and picking Helen of Troy who yeah. did actually run away like she to a certain extent you could argue that I mean yeah, depends she went, how yeah, you she went off with the story. Paris. yeah um, but yeah then. and oh, but actually it's not like he's valuing Helen higher he's valuing male honor yeah over a he woman's virtue, life yeah yeah yeah, and, and over a human, 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 yeah. his beautiful daughter's and, like, and, and the, yeah. the, 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 the bit where it talks about um, him ordering them to gag her with a leather strap. Because he doesn't want them to be cursed. Because, he, yeah, and, but, it, and because, but because he can't bear to hear her scream. Her scream, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but, yeah, oh, it's really brutal, really brutal scene. Yeah, yeah. yeah. brutal, but, but good, effective. And it illustrates one of the things that I think you perhaps didn't like so much about this play the first time you read it. Yeah, so I wanted to talk about dramatic techniques. Is that why you're you can go ahead. That? Yes. Um, so that is a really emotive and beautiful speech. Yes. But I think in a modern play you would expect to see the action of that. And this mm. play, there is no action. There are a succession of people there are a succession of people coming on stage making speeches. Yes. Every now and then there's a period of conversation, for instance, instance Clytemnestra talking to Agamemnon or yeah. Clytemnestra talking to the Herald. There's, there's short periods of, of conversation, but there's no actual um, on-stage drama. Like every every brutal thing that happens, happens off stage huge, and is then discussed. Huge drama on... in the relationships. <laughs> but yeah, no, 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 no but you're right. But all the, the, the big... Actions of yeah. the plot take place offstage. And I think offstage, if you were to yes. perform it now, you would probably change that um, to keep a to keep an audience mm. interested. Do you think? Otherwise, yeah. otherwise it is it's 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 long long paragraphs of exposition. Yes, it is. Um, and that's interesting. And obviously, the writing is beautiful. And I'm yeah. not saying that it's a bad play. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's thousands of years old. It it gets I can give it some leeway. 
but I oh, just right. feel like <laughs> you're giving me away for, for, for being in the, one of the, the, the oldest plays in the, the, the Western theatrical tradition, yeah, but yeah. the very you first know, the playwright awarded, in the Western uh, theatre that we have any accolades even plays. at the time. Yeah, won competitions yeah. at the time, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, but what, what I no. mean is, if you, if you compared it to not necessarily even like a modern play, but yeah. a, a play that's only a thousand years old, or you know, they yeah. or well, I'm well, thinking of Shakespeare, who isn't a thousand years old, um, like five hundred years old. But, but yeah. yeah, no, I know what you mean. And but on the other hand, there is there are advantages to it, like um, showing someone being brutally murdered on stage. Mm. Um, it's hard to do realistically. It's very hard to do realistically. It often ends up looking a bit ridiculous and unconvincing. So actually, yeah. I think there is a degree of wisdom in keeping it off stage and you hear it and you know it's happening and then someone rushes on. Yeah. And I, I guess to a certain extent it's like that um, Lovecraft thing of unimaginable terrors um, yeah. and you know it's like oh it's so unbelievably brutal yeah. and bloody in there you wouldn't yeah. believe it and then yeah. the audience with their imagination can add a lot yeah. more to that. Yeah and the whole thing about um, him having like sort of net thrown over him being trapped and stabbed yeah. and it, you know like the yes it would be hard to you know yeah. it's like when you see um, productions of King Lear, you know, when, when um, uh, uh, he has his eyes put out, you know. Yeah, how um, do you do that in a way that, that doesn't make the audience... His, yeah. Uh, yeah, just yeah. sort of like maybe slightly giggle because it's like... Ooh, that's a bit silly. Yeah, yeah. so it avoids that. And I think why, um, like, we don't know a lot about drama before Aeschylus, and obviously there's drama in other parts of the world, but we're talking about Western drama, and he's like yeah. our first playwright, really, that you get. And like, but Aristotle talks about um, what drama had been like before a bit, mm -hmm. and says that he's different because he actually lets his characters have um, talk to each other and have like yeah. conflict in their their dialogue or or, or have a relation, whereas before it all went through the chorus. Yeah, I see. So, so actually, so actually, he has made massive steps so forward towards towards yeah, having which is probably why he was, you know, winning the yeah. com annual competition. Yeah. Of yeah. Place. yeah, 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 exactly. So this um, this Agamemnon is play number one in is it the Orestes? Orestea. Or Orestea, like it's a set of three plays, and you were saying yes. it's the only. Yes, yeah. which is just brilliant. Which was why I suggested this for our first play yeah. to read because yeah, um, the for the annual um, Greek drama competitions they put on at the Feast of Dionysus, um, it, like people will put on like uh, three three plays, three like sort of tragedy type dramas mm -hmm. and then a fourth kind of like little entertainment at the end and um, uh, and there'd be th like three dramatists would all put on three and then they decide who won. Yeah. yeah and although we have like a selection of plays by um, Aeschylus and Sophocles and Euripides, this is the only set of three we've got that were originally it's all together. Thing. So people yeah. talk about like the plays about um, uh, Oedipus, um, Sophocles, like Theban plays, as if they were a, actually a trilogy, but they were all from different years, yes. different yes. sets, yes. whereas yes. these actually build one to the other. And if you read all three, the, you know, it does... You see progression. Yeah, and you, you see a, a thread running through that's really interesting. So possibly we should read all three eventually. Yeah, yeah, well, I... I you already did. Uh, yeah, I, I went through it and read the other two, but, you know. <laughs> <I'm fine>. <laughs> <laughs> I've got more time. <laughs> you don't have more time, you just read a lot quicker. Yeah. If anything, quick. you probably have less time. Mm, possibly. Anyway! anyway <laughs> so we made it to... 13 and a half minutes, minutes. and we'll um, and in for about 10. So, so we'll, we'll, we, we won't carry on. I think you can gather that we yeah. really enjoyed reading this. I feel like it was a really good start to our yeah. year. Yeah. And I think there's a lot more that you could say if you were going to take longer about like details of the language and oh. moments, um, like the, the long period where Clifton and Lester stuck on stage doing things and the, the power of that and like the way that things are queued up in the dialogue. Like um, the, the foreshadowing is yeah. just is 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 super. Like like there's a bit when um, she's greeting Agamemnon and she's set and she starts talking about our child not being here, and 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 she and that our child should be here. And yeah. you kind of know she's talking about Iphigenia, and Agamemnon is obviously starting to think, "Oh God, Ooh. she's talking about Iphigenia." And then she's, and then she says, "Oh, why are you startled? I mean, Orestes, you know, yeah. I've sent him to be fostered with, you know, uh, to protect him." You know? Yeah, and and so and there's just a, a yeah. there's lots and lots of dramatic tension and 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 your classic tragic dramatic mm. irony. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so like we couldn't before, talk before Clifton Master. 
like first comes on stage, the, the chorus says this line where they're like, oh, and you know, the, the, the wind like an avenging fury or something, and then Kiss from Nestra walks on stage, yeah. and she's the avenging fury. fury. It's brilliant. She is, she is. Yeah. So yeah, it's got fantastic moments. Fantastic moments. And, and we recommend it. Yeah, and definitely would recommend it. And and I and I think actually it, it's 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 good to read it twice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've both enjoyed more. Going the back a second time is it's, it's even better because you spot but and the other thing that it throws up though that any ancient Greek text that you read now it, it, if you can't read Greek is issues of translation yeah and it's almost like in an idea would you, you probably read two or three different translations if yeah, you can't read it overall, yeah overall. but um, I don't know who translated our version but I'll try to put it in the description yeah, when I find yeah, it out yeah yeah um, I think there were some some words were very powerful Power, like yeah, some some bits were very powerful, and some, some words were just could tell they were just an inadequate yeah, translation. Really, yeah. there's a bit where they start talking about Zeus's pickaxe. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, is that something that didn't have the right yeah. ring? I'm sure literally it's probably literally the right translation, yeah. but but it, not quite. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and there was um, a moment when they used awesome. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> like oh, no, you can't use Obviously, it anymore. You know, this is an awesome <laughs> god, and it's like awesome. <laughs> No, no, that's no, not no. what I mean. So, yeah. so um, yeah, that was our first, that was our first play, and and if you've read it, um, Let come on and, and comment. Yeah. yeah, talk to us about what you think about ancient Greeks. Yeah, um, yeah, have um, a lovely day. A lovely day, and we'll be, we'll be we'll be back with um, Nine, Nine Lives, Lives, which is a a, a bang up to date black British young black British. Yeah. So quite from some of the oldest to some of the new. I think it was written in like 2019 or 2018. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very, very recent. It's very so, recent. you know, the whole yeah. drama. Um, speak to you soon. Happy reading. Goodbye. Bye.